Good. We have much to discuss. The faith fear? Fear? It is a true pleasure to meet you. Yes, yes, I, I imagine it is now, and I'll be on your way. Yes. Well, uh, be seeing you, assistant. Good day, Lord Fear. Come, we need to talk. So you're a citizen now. Well done. I heard something about a constable tossing people down sewer drains. Even in this shrine to knowledge, drooling idiots bumble their way to power. <laughs> Ludicrous. Moving on, I require your services once more. It's Sotha Seal. Shortly after you and I parted company, I sought him out to discuss our Daedric artifact. I fear something is askew. His habits, his diction, the, the timbre of his voice, they've all changed, albeit subtly. Worse. Initially, I dismissed it as boredom, fatigue, or even the first signs of senility. But now, after observing him at length, I can say with certainty, this is not the Sotha Seal I know. There's Daedric mischief here, and we will root it out. We will leverage your hard-earned citizenship to make inquiries. First, I will make it known that in light of your recent exploits, I offered to take you on as my aid, an offer you eagerly accepted. As the most powerful mage in the Brast Fortress, I find it difficult to have proper conversations with common folk. They grow silent at my approach, then whisper as I leave. An appropriate, but sadly uninformative, display of deference. Indeed. It's commonly understood that servants grumble about their masters, loudly, to those they consider equals. Ask them about Sotha Seal's recent behavior. I'm confident we'll find something of value tucked away in their churlish complaints. You have questions, of course. Ask what you must. The forces at work here are cunning indeed. You should be prepared for anything. He is inscrutable, but he's also unflinching. Seal always moves deliberately, quietly, and one step at a time, like clockwork. I have never once seen him divert from his course. Until now. In the short time we've been here, he has twice adjusted city patrol routes and delivered three revisions to the fortress charter. Trust me when I say this is unprecedented. So the seal never meddles like this. That's for you to discover. Don't bother speaking with members of the Congress. Varuni's faith in Sotha Seal is unbreakable. Chancellor Gascon resents any threat to the status quo. And Luciana, well, well, let's just say she's been less than helpful. Luciana resents my presence, but she's no fool. I go where I please, when I please. An open confrontation between us would likely leave hundreds dead. So do not trouble yourself. She will not stand in the way of our investigation. Well, you've met Varuni. She's pleasant, without being vapid or boring. Then again, her doe-eyed faith in Sotha Seal turns my stomach. I find religious attachments repulsive. My thoughts on Luciana are well known. As for Gascon... Gascon serves as Chancellor. He commands respect, but suffers from the peculiar character flaw of demanding praise at all times. Adulation. Sad fixation indeed. He holds great power, but it's his petty obsessions that make him dangerous. Be wary. I have important business back in Vardenfell. I can't be late. I need to leave. Forward, it cries. Forward to the fruits of... So you're de Vaithir's new auxiliary, eh? Tough luck, friend. I've heard he's an insufferable bastard, but at least he's not Sotha Seal. 
Better to be turned into a Gua than to serve the clockwork god. Not anymore. In the old days, sure, he was easy to please because he was never around. These days, he changes his mind about something every night. Constant meetings, new dictums daily, adjustments to factotum patrols. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Trust me, this is unprecedented. I'm afraid something's wrong with his enhancements. Like he's having trouble regulating. He's a different person, I swear. Don't tell anyone I said this, especially Gascon. Blasphemy doesn't go over well nowadays. Yes, speaking ill of a god never turns out well. In the old days, he'd take it in stride. Commit your small blasphemies, he'd say. The fire of doubt turns ignorance to steam, but not anymore. This place is becoming more like Mournhold every day. Right. I'm sure you have plenty of work to do for Lord Fear. He's back a few days and already burying you in paperwork, no doubt. Take care of yourself, friend. So you're the one DeVaith tapped to be his aide in the Brass Fortress. Sorry to hear that. Provost Varuni's ancestors hail from House Telvani, just like Lord Fear. But honestly, they couldn't be more different. Not as bad as you might expect. She's young, youth comes with impatience, but I've never felt unfairly judged, and she's generous with her praise. Honestly, if I had the choice between serving Varuni or Sotha Seal, I'd take Varuni every time. Now more than ever, I don't pretend to understand his motives, but he's never been so demanding. One example, he insists that we turn all the lights down before he enters a room. Do you have any idea how difficult that is? It's maddening! Huh, flipping switches. That's rich. Each lamp has its own switch, and some lamps have multiple switches. And if that isn't bad enough, some switches control multiple lamps. He's a god, I know, but it shouldn't take a genius to turn on the lights. Don't even get me started. Varuni might demand some obscure tome in the middle of the night or chide someone for leaving oil on the floor, but that's the worst of it. Sotha Seal exiled an auxiliary last week because she forgot to switch off a lamp. Right, right, don't let me keep you. I can't imagine how demanding Devaith Thea must be. Better you than me, that's for sure. Keep your nose to the cogs and you'll be fine. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to flip two dozen switches again. Were you treated well by the menials? I assume they battered you with complaints. What have you learned? Yes, well, I could have told you that. That's why I sent you here after all. What kinds of demands? Be specific. The lamps in the locutorium, yes? The large assembly room over there? The auxiliaries and factotums have been laboring in there day and night ever since we arrived. Curious. What could lights have to do with this? Well, there's only one way to find out. Impressive. I assumed I'd have to explain it to you. Of course, this requires a functional lamp. I assume he ordered them destroyed. Speak to that high elf of yours, Neravo. The dark elf as well. We need one of these lamps repaired and operable. back in Vardenfell. I can't be late. I need to leave. Forward, it cries. Forward to the fruits of cheap ambition. Ah, I hope to see you again, assistant. Pray tell, what did Devaith Fear have to say? I fear that he and I might have gotten off to a poor start. Did he ask about me? Any mention of my many exploits? Raynor? Surely this is something I can handle myself. Impressing debate fear could greatly increase my standing in the Dwemeric scholarly community. Tell me, 
What does Lord Fear ask of me? Uh, uh, us. He just wants us to build a lamp? What an odd request. No matter. I would be happy to offer my ample expertise, provided you let Devaith Fear know that I did so. First things first. I need to study one of the lamps we're supposed to recreate. I have many functions to help you with your purchases. Probably meant to protect a glass interior? Difficult to say. A complex filament of some kind. The weaving on this fiber, it must be machine made. I should be taking notes. For funneling a gas, perhaps? Interesting. Look at the apertures on this. It must be some kind of modulator that changes the nature of the light. Fascinating. Compressors, filaments, housings, modulators, Yes! I think I understand what these discarded lights have in common. Unlike the other lamps, these compress some kind of geodic gas into metal tubes, then modulate the light to create another kind of illumination that mortal eyes cannot see. Invisible light! Remarkable! The potential applications are... limitless! Yes, with Rayner's assistance, I believe we can recreate this lamp without much difficulty. Of course, you'll need to procure the requisite parts. These are all broken beyond repair. What do you plan to do with this light, exactly? You plan to do what? Oh dear. Well, this seems like a terrible idea. But I shall rely upon you and Lord Fear to protect me. Here's a list of the components I'll need. Once you've acquired them, meet me in the Hall of Refined Techniques. Good luck.
Now there's the look of someone on the hunt for something specific. You've come to the right place, friend. I've got a bit of everything. What can I get you? As a matter of fact, I acquired some of those just a few days ago. Apparently, someone's tossing out the old lighting to make way for the new. They're not easy to come by anymore, though. What's your offer? Varuni Arvel? Well, that changes everything. Any friend of Varuni's is a friend of mine. Why don't you take this tube on the house? Just let Varuni know how helpful I was, all right? And that I'm pretty good looking. Well spoken to. Deal? Turned. Excellent! Raynor and I have cobbled together a serviceable frame for the lamp. All we need now are the components I sent you to acquire. Were you successful? Wonderful! I am confident this lamp will conform to the exact specifications of the lamps they removed. Provided Raynor didn't make any miscalculations. So, would this be the time to inform Devaith Fear of our success? Or mine, specifically? Excellent! Excellent! No need to return here, of course. Kirith should be back straight away, and I'll have her run the completed lamp over to the Locutorium as soon as it's ready. See you soon, Assistant! Some sort of mistake. I'm not meant to be here. Your path has been set before you, Auxiliary. I suggest. Ah, I was beginning to worry. Not about you, of course. These apostles have been circling me like cliff racers. Looking for an autograph, no doubt. So tiresome. I take it you were successful in learning about these lights and constructing a new one? Well done. I assume you discovered the special property of these lamps. Why does my dear friend Seal go to such lengths to avoid them? Visible light. Fascinating. To help with factotum navigation, perhaps? Huh. No matter. Further inquiry must wait. Now is the time for action. I will request a congressional assembly. Plant your lamp on the balcony above, then return to me. Did you say something about putting the lamp on the balcony? We might have a problem. Raynor and that annoying High Elf finished your lamp, but there's a problem. On the way here, I overheard an aide complaining about some new security measures Sotha Seal put in place. Looks like the balcony is under heavy guard now. Looks that way, unless you want blood on your hands, of course. But that might complicate our sponsorship a smidge, yeah? Just be quick and quiet, like me. You'll be fine. Here's the lamp. Good luck.
I convinced Sotha Seal that the Congress requires yet another lecture on the sanctity of clockwork automata. He eagerly agreed. Seemed almost giddy about it. It was unsettling. Is all in readiness? Good. Seal's lecture should begin any moment now. Stand ready to activate the lamp. I'm reasonably certain that something will happen, but the specifics elude me. I guess this is what uncertainty feels like. What a novel change of pace. I haven't the time to discuss this, Faruni. Wittingly or unwittingly, Lord Set no longer serves well, the people of Clark. That was enlightening. To think I've been speaking to Sotha Sil's shadow all this time. It seems so lifelike. Far more advanced than my own, I'm sorry to say. Fascinating. It really is too bad we'll all be dead soon. Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but I will be frank. If an imposter sits upon the throne aligned and learns how to wield the power of this place, a cataclysm will follow. We may yet discover a way to avert this disaster, but the chances are slim. Stay with Varuni. With Sotha Seal exposed as an imposter, the Congress will fall into turmoil. In such chaos, dark truths always float to the surface. Pray they do so quickly. I have other inquiries to make. Stay vigilant. We will meet again soon. My dear Lord Set, what happened to you? I can scarcely believe what we just witnessed. How could this happen? How could a shadow masquerade as Lord Set? The Father of Mysteries would never let such a thing happen. There must be another explanation. Fear, of course. Always the iconoclast. I'll bet he's snickering at us even now. It doesn't matter. I... I appreciate your diligence. This has been a profoundly upsetting ordeal. But we must move forward. We must find the real Lord Set. Yes. He was acting strangely, wasn't he? He always chafed under Lord Set's rule. Now, he finally has a pretext to seize control, and he slinks away like a broken brassilisk. Curious. Too curious. The real Lord Set will aid us eventually, I know it. In the meantime, we must do for ourselves. Thank you for everything you've done. It appears we'll have to do a lot more before this is through. Classic Gascon. Fleeing to his chambers when things go poorly. I'm sure that news of Lord Set's condition has already made it to the streets. We have to move quickly to prevent a panic. Try to talk to Gascon. He clearly doesn't care what I have to say, but he might listen to an exodromo. You remain, you know, a novelty. No offense. We can't assemble the Congress without the Chancellor. Check his rectory in the west wing of the Basilica. He hides in there sometimes to nurse a bruised ego, or write passive-aggressive memoranda. I'll try to settle the Apostle's nerves. Honestly, my nerves could use some settling. Don't let Gascon wriggle out of this. He has a duty and an obligation. 
as do I. What? Yes. Yes, I'll be fine. I just... This makes no sense. I don't understand how a shadow could take Lord Set's place. Maybe this is some sort of test. But why test us? The Clockwork Apostles haven't strayed. We build and pray and experiment just as the holy texts dictate. Compromised? You make it sound as if Lord Set suffers some kind of defect. Like a crimped duct or a stripped bolt or something. We're talking about a divine being. Gods can't be compromised. They exist without flaws. Right? Do you know what the sermons say? Complexity belies the truth. The world rests on simple principles. Set is the truth and the light. Understand the simple and you understand the obscure. I do appreciate your candor. Let's pick this up again later. <laughs>